do it now before you forget. something folks are you always saying I'll be happy when such and such happens I'll be happy happy when B happens I'll be happy happy when so and so happens no 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 that's not how you do it you're happy now you're happy 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 right now and if you're not happy you sit down and you think why you should be happy 
I have 11 people that I've been asked to pray for. Maybe it's 13. 12, 13, 14. The last one was a woman going in for operation on uterine cancer. And the doctor intimated that it came from the bacteria that a tick carries that causes Lyme disease. This is the strange thing about Lyme disease. It does things like that. But you don't pray and you say, God, make so and so, and God, do this, and God. That's not prayer. God knows what's going on, and God knows what is best. Prayer is taking your energy from yourself and sending positive, powerful pulses to the person who needs help. And it's coming from your energy. And another thing before I get into that, sending the energy from you to another, is guilt. No healing without healing the guilt. Now there is a song for that. And the song is May thy rich grace impart strength to your fainting heart. Your zeal inspired Oh, hear us while we pray. Take all our guilt away. Oh, let us from this day be holy. Thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to your fainting heart. Take all our guilt away. Oh, let us from this day be holy. Fine. How do you get rid of guilt? You face it. You acknowledge it. You admit it. And it's very, very simple. You say, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry. I ask to be forgiven. I'll take the hit. That's atonement. And then you say, I forgive everybody who has done me wrong. Isn't that in the prayer that Jesus Christ wrote? Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And every time the devil torments you with it, you say, I'm sorry, I'm wrong, I wish I hadn't done it, and I'm atoning for it, and I forgive everybody else involved. Folks, you're not going to have help if you have guilt. All guilt, before this day, is taken. We are starting out clean. There is no more guilt. I have no guilt about such and such. It has all been taken away.
an act of sovereign power granting oblivion. That's what amnesty is. It's beautiful. Say it again. An act of sovereign power granting oblivion. And it's gone. Oblivion. It's a pardon for past offenses. Why do we talk to you about it? Because it is so important. There's no healing without atoning, without getting rid of the guilt. And I'm going to bring in now Nikki Gumbel's prayer from the Alpha Course. God, we are sorry for the things that we have done wrong. And we will stay away from those things. Let me hear you say it. We are sorry for the things that we've done wrong. And we will stay away from those things. God, thank you for all that you do for us. The opulence. The profusion. The affluence. Thank you, God. And now, God, clean out our hearts and fill them with the Holy Spirit. I started talking about the people I've been asked to pray for. And I will and have sent them powerful, positive pulses of help, goodwill, happiness, strength, amnesty, forgiveness, joy, appreciation, popularity, money, the kind of house that they want, the kind of car that they want. The kind of things that they want for their children and for their parents. Send them positive, powerful pulses of success and being appreciated and being loved and being applauded. Yes, I will send them those pulses and I'll take those pulses from my own energy. That's what prayer is, that's what thought is. It's electromagnetic wave of the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength. I will take it from my own body and send it to them. But I'm going to start saying to these people, uh, get up the strength to get up tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock and face God and write down what you hear. Tell God what you've done wrong. Tell God what you've done right. Tell God what you should do. And listen to what God has to say to you. Listen to the wisdom. Listen to the prudence. That's the prayer I will say to all of these people. We'll start with the first one. Page 124. This is the joy book for... This joy book started as a joy book number 107 and it started on the 8th of September and it was over. And I reached the 14th on the 7th. Uh, we're looking for prayers, most of the prayers of people that were on page 124. Rivette, a sweet lady who's having a health problem. We will cure that health problem by teaching Martha at 5 o'clock in the morning to get up and to read the Bible and to meditate on it, to sing a hymn and to say a prayer. Two hours, the first thing in the morning, 5 to 7 a.m. And Tutara who has an advanced case of Lyme disease. We can beat that. We can cure that. Tara, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning in your sanctuary, your own place in space, where there is nobody, just you and God. You get up, Tara, and you listen to God, and 
and God will heal you. She's in New Mexico. For Kathy Barrett. Hi, this is Kathy Barrett. Kathy, what has happened to you? Never should have happened to you. And go back and list whatever you've done wrong and say you're sorry. And then list some of the grand and wonderful things that God has given you. You can walk, can't you? You can see, you can talk, right? You can hear, you have the olfactory sense, you have the sense of taste, and you have the sense of touch. Just list a few of the wonderful things that God has done for you. Bear this in mind, folks. Do not complain. Do not dispute. And replace that with thanks, praise, and rejoice. This is the prayer that I will send to you, uh, Zeke, Zeke Hunter. Admit what you've done wrong. Regret it. Acknowledge it, atone for it, and take the hit. For Florence and Willamantic, who suffered a stroke. Clean your heart out, Florence. Clean your heart out and ask God to fill it with the Holy Spirit. I may thy rich grace impart strength to your fainting heart. Your zeal inspire. Oh, hear us while we pray. Take all our guilt away. Oh, let us from this day be holy. I love it, I love it, I love it. Rose Ernst, you are so brave. You've gone through so many cancer procedures, so many operations, in and out of the hospital, and you go to work. And you talk to people and you help people. Rose, five o'clock in the morning, face your creator, face the love, face the grace, feel the pulses that are coming from God, feel the strength. That's Rose Earth in Norwich, Connecticut. Harriet Scott in Pennsylvania. Your daughter Victoria loves you because you've always been so kind. You never hurt anybody and you never said anything bad about anybody. Harry is God. Get the additional strength you need by facing your Creator at 5 o'clock in the morning. First thing, and listening, and writing down, and everybody, have a joy book. My joy book, in my handwriting, has got so bad that I bought this handwriting book. <laughs> I bought it at Walmart and it's for kindergarten through three grade, third grade. And I am improving my handwriting. That's a goal. Well, that's a resolution for the year 2008. Don, I know Dominique to write legibly. And to remember to turn the recorder on and to turn it off. And to keep the hands away from the face unless you're in the bathroom. Uh, Patricia McDermott, woman of great talent and great ability. I pray fervently, or I should say, I send you pulses of strength, positive, powerful pulses, that the anxiety you feel be replaced by the peace of God. And that in the morning, 5 o'clock, away from everybody, oh, far from the madding crowd, is Thomas Hardy entitled the book. Far from the madding crowd, that you be alone with your great God, who loves you and who created you with a certain set of talents that nobody else has, because God has a certain job for you to do in which you will find happiness, satisfaction, fulfillment, help, 
Peace. And George McDermott, your, her husband, who's causing most of this. That you find the real answer for what you're looking for. You're such a talented and gifted man. So intelligent and so energetic and so hardworking. Go alone with God at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. You and here. All the riches and the wealth and the treasure that God has for you. And the happiness. We're not going to say any more, are we? I'll be happy when such and such. No, you're happy right now. You are happy right now. You have so much given to you. And Helen Lukakis, I don't believe that you have two years to live. I don't believe that at all. And we will overcome it. And how will we do that? By feeling the strength and the health of God. And how do you do that? You spend your time with God. Two hours in the morning and two hours at night. Six to eight. I think I lost my place. It doesn't matter. There really is no place. It's all continuous. Page 130. I hear these things from God, and then I make them known to you. I'm just one in this generation that's trying to make people stop and hear the voice of the Lord. Stop and be happy. Stop the world, get off and be happy. Paul says in Romans 2 I think it is for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God okay so I've sinned and I am sorry about it and I'm not going to do it again and I'm How can we not fall short of the glory of God? We're working on it. We're a work in progress. In 1 Corinthians 1, 18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Are you perishing? Do you want to be perishing? But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That's what we want. We're being saved, aren't we? And we're having the power of God. This word amateur is a very interesting word. It comes from the Latin word amore, which means to love. Guess what amateur is applied to? It's applied to a person who does things for the love of it. Do you think I do chat with Glendora for anything but the love of it? The love of what? The love of the opportunity to make you happy. That's the greatest love. An amateur is somebody who undertakes an interest or an activity for the joy of it, for the love of it, whereas a professional does it for money. Those who serve the Lord for the sheer love of it. A couple of other words I'd like to have you remember. Ambiguous. Ambi. It means two. So it can have two meanings. Uh, it's uncertain. It's cloudy. Uh, it's shadowy. And then ambitious. 
a person is ambitious who has an inordinate desire for preferment, power, money, honor, rank, then there's a good meaning to it. Ambitious is striving for something that's above somebody. And that striving for that is ennobling and uplifting. Ambry is a cupboard. Now let's have a cupboard. You know what that noise is? It's the compressor in the 1993 Lincoln. The 1993 Lincoln doesn't have struts and it doesn't have shock absorbers. It rides on air. And out of the clear blue, not even running, not even being touched, this compressor will start empowering the car with its air. Ambry is a cupboard. Now in our Ambry, what are we going to put? Prayers, hymns, positive, powerful thoughts. That's what's going to be in our Ambry. And going to church. Going to church and the Sabbath are two different things. You have to do both. Going to church can be very distracting from the Sabbath. And so, I'll sit down and lie down in the sanctuary. The my space, my place is space, all alone. And there I will celebrate the Sabbath. Because often church is very distracting. But it's good to go get things and put them in your amber, in your cupboard. Ambulatory. You thank God that you're ambulatory. You're able to move. I know people who are. But they don't have to be unhappy about it because there's too many other blessings. You run out of time before you run out of counting your blessings. Ambush is a tactical trap set by the enemy to ensnare by surprise. These are all over the place. Ameliorate is a good word. Makes things better. With these people I pray for, I am hoping to ameliorate and make things better. Amen. Full speed ahead. Let's go, full speed ahead, you and I, to your happiness. You're not going to wait for to be happiness tomorrow. You're not going to wait to be happy in an hour. You are happy right now, and don't you forget it. An amenity. That's the graciousness, the civility. And it's a beautiful thing to see. And you do see people with it. And you so see so many people without it. Some people call up on a chat with Glendora to do just the opposite of amenity. That's good. That gives you a chance to pray for that anonymous person. Gives you a chance, a place to start him. Immerse. Immerse. Is a punishment that is set by the court. I have a few immerses to set for the court as far as the courts reforming and doing what they should. 20 years of that. Americanism. Belief in what is American. In America's ideals. In America's traditions. And in America's interests. Put that in your ambrys. 